Good evening and welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chauhan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. A PIL has been filed in the Supreme Court seeking a CBI or an SIT investigation into the reports regarding alleged sexual assault of women in Sandesh Khali in West Bengal. The petition alleges complicity and dereliction of duty on the part of the West Bengal police and that the state police is acting hand in gloves with the main accused Trinamool Congress leader Shah Jahan Sheikh. The petitioner points out to the alleged attack on the officials of the Enforcement Directorate, which happened when they went to raid Sheikh's house. Following that, he has absconded. The petitioner states that after Sheikh left the area, many women, mostly belonging to the SC and ST communities, came out to the streets on 8th February, protesting against the alleged sexual assault and atrocities committed by the said Sheikh Shah Jahan and other political leaders. The petitioner raises the apprehension that fair and impartial investigation will not happen in the case if it is left to the state police. Thus, the petitioner urges the Supreme Court to transfer the investigation of this case to the Central Bureau of Investigation or a special investigation team under the monitoring of the court. The petition was today mentioned before the CGI for urgent listing, who agreed to look into the matter. In response to the Supreme Court's direction to remove the encroachment by a political party in a land meant for Delhi judiciary, the Aam Admi Party has filed an affidavit in the court stating that the said plot had been allotted to it by the Delhi government in 2015. Last week, the Supreme Court had expressed dismay at the occupation of a political party in the land meant for Delhi's judicial infrastructure. The bench was told by Amicus Curie senior advocate K. Parmeshwar that the Delhi High Court had not been able to recover possession of the land as it was being used for by a political party. The court had ordered that officials from the Delhi government and relevant departments along with the High Court Registrar General meet before the next hearing and they must provide a specific timeline to the court for clearing the encroachments. And it also posted the matter to 19th February. The Aam Admi Party in an affidavit has now told the Supreme Court that it is not in encroachment of any land meant for the judiciary in Delhi. It has been stated that the subject premises were officially allotted to the party by the government of NCT of Delhi in 2015 for its state unit office. This was strictly in accordance with the party's entitlement as a state party at that time. Though the party agrees to leave the premises but asks the court to provide another space. This is because leaving immediately would mean that they have no office space, especially with the upcoming elections. They have also pointed out that other national parties in Delhi have their own offices. And now a short update on the petition filed by Sharad Pawar, which challenges the recent order passed by Election Commission of India, by which the official clock symbol of NCP was allotted to the Ajit Pawar group. Senior Advocate Abhishek Manusinghvi, representing Sharad Pawar, today requested the Chief Justice of India for an urgent listing of their petition, challenging the decision of the Election Commission of India, which recognized the Ajit Pawar's faction as the real Nationalist Congress Party. Highlighting the urgency in the matter, the senior advocate informed the bench that there is a likelihood that Sharad Pawar may face a whip issued by Ajit Pawar since the Maharashtra Assembly session would commence next week. It was further informed Sharad Pawar's faction has yet not been allotted any party symbol. The bench comprising Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandra Chud and Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra agreed to list the matter at the earliest. The Supreme Court today began its hearing in the matter relating to conditions in prisons. Last week, the court had taken Suomoto notice of alarming number of pregnancies occurring among women inmates in prisons across the country. This development had come one day after a significant plea was brought before the Calcutta High Court, drawing attention to a troubling trend of women prisoners becoming pregnant while in custody within correctional homes across the state of West Bengal. In the Supreme Court, the bench of Justices Hima Kohli and Asanuddin Amanullah is currently hearing the PIL aimed at tackling the overcrowding crisis in Indian prisons. 
Given this, the Suomoto case is also being heard along with the PIL. In January, let me tell you, the court had ordered establishment of district level committees tasked with evaluating the existing infrastructure in jails and determining the need for additional facilities following the model prison manual of 2016. The court in today's order expanded the scope of the district level committees. The committee is also required to address the aspect particularly related to female inmates holistically. The bench has further directed that apart from these members, a senior most lady judicial officer in the district may also be included as a member. The court reasoned that this is being asked to ensure that available security measures and healthcare infrastructure can be fairly assessed. The matter has now been posted on 9th April. Stay tuned. The Supreme Court today tagged a fresh petition challenging criminalization of triple talaq along with the petitions already pending before the court on the same issue. The advocate appearing for the petitioner argued that the provisions for punishment of a Muslim husband conducting triple talaq under the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Act 2019 were anti-men and violative of their rights. The bench comprising CJI Chandrachud and Justices J.B. Pardewala and Manoj Mishra, though did not seem inclined to issue notice, tagged the matter with other pending PILs on the identical question of law. Let me tell you here, in 2019, the top court issued notice to the union on a batch of petitions challenging the constitutional validity of the 2019 Act. Samast Kerala Jamayatul Ulema, Jamaat Ulema Hind, Muslim Advocates Association, Andhra Pradesh, etc., have filed the previous petitions. In another important update for today, the Gujarat High Court has dismissed pleas filed by Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal and his party's Rajya Sabha MP Sanjay Singh, challenging a Sessions Court order affirming summons issued against them by a magistrate court in a defamation case filed by Gujarat University concerning Prime Minister Narendra Modi's education degree. A bench of Justice Hasmuk D. Suthar had reserved its orders in the pleas after hearing both sides on 2nd February this year. The duo had moved the High Court in September last year, four days after a Sessions Court in Gujarat's Ahmedabad dismissed their revision application. The appeal also raises the issue of the complaint having a chilling effect on the right to freedom of speech and expression. Also, last month, the Supreme Court had stayed the criminal defamation proceedings against Kejriwal and Singh, refusing to entertain Singh's plea to transfer the case out of Gujarat at the present stage. The bench of Justices B.R. Gawai and Sandeep Mehta had left the question of granting interim relief to be considered by the Gujarat High Court. Till such time, the defamation case before the trial court had been stayed. In another update, the Supreme Court has observed that an employee cannot be terminated from the post merely because he sent a representation to his superior officers flouting the proper channel. In the instant case, an appellant, a class 4 employee employed in the Bareilly judgeship, was transferred and posted as a process server and was denied the allowance for the same. Against the denial of allowance, he made representations to superior authorities such as the Registrar General of the High Court and other officials of the state government including the then Chief Minister without routing the proper channel. Taking note of the aforesaid flouting of the route in making a representation, the district judge while accepting the inquiry report had dismissed the employee from the position of class 4 employee and the decision was upheld by the High Court. So he approached the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court set aside the charge against the employee that he had made false allegations of caste discrimination. Regarding the charge against him for making representation directly to the High Court and the Chief Minister, Justices B.R. Gawai and Prashant Kumar Mishra has observed that such an act by itself cannot amount to major misconduct for which punishment of termination from service should be imposed. With this, it set aside the High Court's order that upheld the termination. In a habeas corpus case filed by a woman for the production of her younger sister, the Supreme Court has held that an elder sister does not have a legal right to exercise guardianship except when there is an order by a competent court. 
The petitioner here initially went to the Himachal Pradesh High Court with a habeas corpus petition asking for her sister, who is respondent number 9 in the case, to be brought before the court. She claimed that her other sister, respondent number 4, along with her husband, had unlawfully kept the younger sister and planned to take her to Canada. The High Court sent notice about the case to the state authorities. When a status report was submitted, it revealed that respondent number 9 had signed an affidavit notarized by a notary public stating that she was living willingly with the respondent number 4 and her husband. So, the petitioner's plea before the High Court was disposed of. Aggrieved by this, the petitioner approached the Supreme Court. Now, the Supreme Court bench comprising Justices Anirudh Bose and Sanjay Kumar has refused to interfere with the High Court order and has dismissed the petition. The bench also said that the writ petition seeking relief in the nature of habeas corpus would be a proper proceeding for the grievance of the petitioner. And lastly, the Karnataka High Court today dismissed the plea filed by Veena Vijayan, director of IT company Exalogic Solutions and daughter of Kerala's Chief Minister Pinaray Vijayan, seeking to quash the order passed by the Union of India directing Serious Fraud Investigation Office, that is the SFIO, to investigate the company. A bench of Justice M. Nagprasanna, while reserving the order last week, had verbally asked the SFIO to not take any coercive action against the company till the order was pronounced. The court has now asked the company to provide the documents sought by the SFIO. You already know Exalogic Solutions faced controversy after reports revealed that Cochin Minerals and Retail Limited, that is CMRL, allegedly paid 1.72 crore to Exalogic Solutions from 2017 onwards. An order by the Income Tax Interim Board of Settlement indicated that CMRL made these payments without receiving any services. This raised allegations that the money was kickbacks disguised as payments for IT services to the company. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.